Closet, also known as the Jim McCarthy VoiceOvers World Headquarters Studio. This is the JMVO Weekly Primer. Please subscribe, rate, and comment via JimMcCarthyVoiceOvers.com forward slash podcast. Yeah, once again, we are out of the closet. Not in a closet this time. The JMVO Weekly Primer is about making your life better through marinating your mind in good stuff. My name is Jim McCarthy, owner, operator, and chief bottle washer at Jim McCarthy VoiceOvers, and I believe that as business owners and entrepreneurs, we are bombarded by negativity every day, and it's the last thing we need. If you want to see your life and business change for the better, consume nurturing good stuff. As usual, the primer is brought to you by Big Dot Lighting and Electrical. We are a Middle Tennessee commercial and residential services company that specializes in converting your business to energy efficient LED lighting. Check us out at bigdotlighting.com. So yes, as I mentioned at the top of the show, I'm taking it out on the road. It's it's a weekly primer, but again, probably weekly-ish at this point because I've got so many other podcasts going on. It's a matter of time until I get around to my own. So every now and then I actually get out and get around to it. So um, um, and, and if you're watching the video, it's it's kind of an odd setting that I'm in. I'm in a classroom. This is actually my daughter's classroom, and there's a reason why. Uh, as my daughter gets older, she's 13 years old, I'm going through the motions of uh, parent nights, which are always fun, and meeting the teachers, and <clears throat> you kind of go into what the curriculum is going to be and how the, the year is going to play out uh, for your child. Um, every now and then, we've all got them, and we've got overhead announcements on. That's really cool. That'll happen about three more times. Awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Got to love the, yeah. uh, the, you know, the, the ongoing spontaneity of this whole thing. But as you get into, you know, we all have those teachers that we remember, that made a huge impact on our lives. Uh, the teachers that that te- that seem to stand out, and there's a, there's there's much more of a purpose behind what they do than just well, hey, I love teaching. Um, and occasionally, you run into these gentlemen. Bus number seventy nine <laughs> is here. In case you're actually missing that bus, so. The funny thing about my guest today is the fact I'm I'm, I'm going to struggle how to sp- how to say his last name, Mister Svilik. Yes, Svilik. Yeah, Svilik. Svilik. You know, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, so I played. It's funny. I played a lot of sports growing up. Yeah. And whether it was in the newspapers, like the news, or the the announcer of the hockey game, baseball game, whatever it was, Svilik, Svilik, Svilik. <laughs> so I think it's been butchered so many times. I yeah. don't, I'm not sure, but. Uh, yeah, so most kids call me Coach S or Mr. S, and it's a uh, civilic. Are you still a coach here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. I, I coach, uh, coach wrestling, coach wrestling at a high school, uh, also coach baseball. So. Oh, very cool. Right on. So there's a reason why I brought all my stuff out here. We've been talking about getting together for about a month now mm-hmm. and, and doing this. Um, we went through parents' night that night. Uh, I, I meant to come by and shake your hand after that, but they kind of ushered us out, and it was like very. It was actually as if we were going through the day. They had the bells and all the periods and stuff like that, and more buses that are actually needing to be, uh, you know, letting everybody know that they're coming it, in. It'll be over soon. That's okay. I, I tell the kids to hitchhike. That's Life right. skills. That's right. right? So. And that's the thing that kind of really made me think. Okay, this guy's a little bit different. You know, a lot of the other teachers were kind. Of, I'll be honest. Going through the motions, they're all very nice and very impactful. But the one thing that stood out about you was the fact that you were like, "Look, I I, I care, but I don't care if they absorb what they're learning. What I want to make sure that they are learning how to do is how to study." Mm. And that was the big thing. That was a practical topic that was a practical piece of advice uh, or, or just content that really stood out to me that and I was going wow that's very that's very interesting mm-hmm. um, you have a very off-center way to look at teaching am I right I would think so yes right. I, I uh, again so I, I I start I always wanted to be a teacher right and later on the kids will ask me because I think right now the kids might be scared of me still mm-hmm. a little bit they see a tie and all that but toward like towards halfway through the year they'll say mr. S why do you want to be a teacher and I hated school. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I hated school. I was the kid where like half my books are in that locker, half of them are at home, uh, not putting my name on papers. I just didn't like it. Yeah. And I was the kid who said, why do I have to know this? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I did, I did 15 word problems. Why do I have to do 20? Mm-hmm. Uh, so because of that though, that ended up hurting me, mm-hmm. you know? So I, I didn't buy into what was happening and all that. But it, even when I was younger, I remember thinking, oh, this would be a great project. Right. Well, what if the teacher assigned this? Uh, 
so one of the reasons that I got into teaching is I wanted to make a difference in someone's life. Mm-hmm. You know, when people always say, what's the meaning of life? To me, it's make a difference in at least one person's life. Right. And that was part of it. And then, you know, I just didn't want kids to hate school as much as I hated it. You know I mean? That's that simple. <laughs> um, and, and I, I think, uh, I, I try my best to do that and I hope, I hope they're getting that. Um, but I don't know, you know, it's kind of, Every kid's different. You know, I think it's, uh, it, it, judging by how my daughter comes home, she's, it's very easy to see how you're going to become uh, probably the, the one of her favorites, you know. Um, so, so what you're doing does make an impression. And one of the things that you kind of walked us through was how you were, you got testimonials from previous students, which I've no. never seen before. And I believe you had them hanging on the board yeah. and around the room and parents could read them, but they were also there for the students that came into your classroom could read them. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't like, Oh my gosh, he's such a great teacher. I mean, it was stuff like that. People were singing your praises. I think, I think some were death threats even maybe. Yeah. It, some I, death threats here and there, yeah. but that what really happened was, uh, just make sure you study. And some, some of them were even like, and when you think you've studied enough, study for another day or so. Don't do the studying the night before, Mm -hmm. you know, that's practical advice. And that's what I kind of took away from it was like, okay, he's teaching practical stuff. You know, it's one thing to know the, the history and everything of the, of the country and the world and all that stuff, all the, all the, the highlights, let's say. It's another thing to actually take away practical, real world use type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And before you and I uh, started doing this, you had mentioned, and it was like music to my ears, that you're a huge fan of the trades and trade schools and things of that nature. Talk a little bit about that. Where did that come from? You know, I think, uh, and and I understand why. We, you need college. Mm -hmm. You need, if you're gonna have a good future, you have to have college, have to have college, have to have college. You know, and especially when you're looking at the climate of the economy right now, some people are saying, ah, you know, maybe a recession, maybe not. And either way, you know, I don't care. It's, it's cyclical. It's going to happen. But I'll tell you one thing, that CEO of that company, once that toilet breaks, they're calling a plumber. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that the trades are often overlooked and, you know, like Lexiles. Lexiles are huge here Mm -hmm. and, you know, building vocabulary and all that. And when you break down people's jobs and Lexiles, the janitors actually have a higher lexile than teachers, Mm -hmm. you know, working with all these chemicals and all that. And I think that it's often overlooked, but when you look at at the backbone of society, when you look at the farmers, the plumbers, the carpenters, the ones who are building things, Mm -hmm. I think we often overlook them when they're the ones who, without them, life's not functioning. Right. And, you know, and and I get it again, college, but college isn't for everyone, you know, and and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, if, if I wasn't a teacher, Again, I wanted to be a teacher to make a difference in a life. I probably would have gone military or trade school. Right. You know, and, and I try to focus on that because, again, college, 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 college. You know, and we live in a great, a great city, a great district. And I don't know the numbers, but I'm going to say more than 80% are going to go to some sort of college, community mm-hmm. college, four-year college, whatever it might be. So I don't need to talk to the, to the 28 kids in my classroom about college. I need to talk to the two kids over there who might feel like a failure because well everyone else is going to college and I'm not so I guess I'm a loser. Absolutely not. I told my I told my students a, a story. We were going over the social classes of colonial America and how there was the gentry class, the middle class, and the the lower class. And I I wish that we can completely eradicate middle class, upper class, social class. And I tell them a story. Uh, my buddy who lives in Miami, mm-hmm. it, I, this guy that I know, a lot of money, private jet all this stuff so makes a lot of money. My other buddy's poor. So my buddy who makes a lot of money, I mean, he'll jump on a, a jet, fly somewhere for a steak. Mm-hmm. I mean, so a lot of money. And then my other buddy, I remember in high school, his dad ran out on the family and his mom really wasn't there working multiple jobs. I remember cockroaches running around the house. I remember he, he has four sisters and my buddy didn't even really graduate high school. He right. walked with us, but I don't think he got his diploma. And the idea is one guy's upper class, one guy's lower class. Now, the person that I know uh, from Miami will like fart and swear and spit and do anything they want because they've got the money. My other buddy, when we were in high school, I remember he, and again, they don't have a lot of money here, and I remember being over at his house when credit card companies were calling, and mm-hmm. they just would let the phone ring and ring and ring. And at that point, I didn't understand, and now looking back, I, I get it. And I remember watching him give his money to somebody for lunch because that kid was hungry, and I watched him give his jacket one time living in Ohio because somebody was cold. You know, we live in society where, well, this person over here who does what he wants, he's upper class, and this person doesn't have a lot of money, they're lower class. 
So going back to the trade school, uh, my dad was kind of like a dad, dad to this kid. And he would always go to my dad for advice. And my dad said, stay the path. You know, he got a job at a, at a uh, nursing home, you know, just a janitor. They said, hey, do you want to go and we'll pay for you to get this certification? He wasn't sure. My dad said, anytime someone's going to pay for you to get some piece of paper, you do it. So he went and he worked and he worked. Finally, he ends up working in heating and air conditioning, right? So he moves and he's not sure if he should move down to uh, South Carolina. My dad convinces him to do it. He goes, do it, you know, big break. He goes in for a job interview and he goes, so, so how much do you hope to make here? My buddy doesn't know. He goes, well, I'm hoping to start at maybe like $29,000. And they laughed in his face and said, son, you're starting at, at about 70,000, not counting commission. <laughs> yeah. And my buddy goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that'll work. Sounds yeah. good. So my, so my point is like the trade school are, are the forgotten ones. And really the trade schools are the ones that are when the air conditioner breaks, when the toilet breaks, when the lights aren't working, that's who you call. It's the first thing that crosses your mind when that stuff happens is, yeah. oh gosh, what's this going to cost me? Yeah. 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 And, and that's the thing. Like, so you were talking how you got your foot in the door and I thought the price you said was eight grand. Yeah. So eight, yeah. 8,000. Radio school cost $8,000 back in the day. Yeah. It's like, oh my gosh, that's expensive. And then college, 50,000. Yeah. You know, and, mm -hmm. and I, again, I tell these kids and many of them are going to college again, but I got a piece of paper that says, Hey, I know history and I know political science and all that. And I have $30,000 in debt. Yeah. You know, the trade school who's getting paid to get an apprenticeship a lot of times, maybe eight thousand, ten thousand dollars even, they're starting at a higher higher medium there with money, yet lower class. See what I like about college. what you're saying here is that you're not alienating the kid. Cause see, when I went to high school and I've told this story many a time, was that if you didn't go to college, that was it. You were gonna become a loser. Yeah. All right. There was no hope for you. There was no chance. And I lived with that for probably about 10, 15 years of my life. Got into radio, uh, found what my true awareness was and my talent and my skill and my gifts and talents, um, and carried that through till about, I don't know, six or seven years ago. Um, and then realized that a lot of the stuff I learned in a subsequent career, I sold cars for about uh, three years. Um, two of those years at a Highline Mercedes dealership here in Nashville. And you, I mean, I tell people all the time, one of the best schools I've ever been to, that was my college education. Yeah. Um, I learned how to sell. I learned how to create rapport. I learned how to integrate my marketing skills that I learned in radio and start branding myself uh, in a personal brand sense. It was one of those things that, you know, it's never too late to start mm -hmm. learning. And one of the things I implore to my kids is that I don't care if you go to college. I really don't. I don't think I don't think you need it these days. I think there are other avenues that you can make a living, trade schools, culinary schools, anything like that. I said if you want to become a doctor, a lawyer, of course, you got to go through the schools, right. you got to go take on the specialized debt. Right. Yeah. Right. So, you know, you'd mentioned the economy before and it's very interesting that you did that the economy is well everyone's beating the well not everybody, but there are a couple of people that are beating the recession drums right now. Right. Um and a lot of it might be due to a college bubble, okay? Yes. The college loan, the student loan debt bubble then that they're going through. And everyone's like, well, it's going to be 2008 all over again. I go, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. There's no tangible assets attached to that yeah. To those loans, they're not. People aren't going to be, you know, unable to pay for houses anymore, and then the houses and the neighborhoods start tanking. Yeah. I said that was the ripple effect of mm -hmm. that. With this, it's a piece of paper that basically says, "Hey, you can get a an entry level job." Yeah. Okay, um, and, and and then they made it where well, everyone's going to college, right. which again, and again. And I am not bashing college by any means. No, like, I don't either. It's, I bash the fact that they're teaching people how to go into debt to get a freaking right. degree. But, but now it's like, well, a college degree is not going to cut it, son. You right. Need, you need a master's. You need you, the, and you need a social imp social media page is that, yeah. that sometimes they want to see that now. Yeah. You you mentioned, and, and it was great, you mentioned how you know, you're know you never too, too old to learn. Right. My quote back here, and this, I'll tell you, this quote right here changed my life. Right. Again, I hated school. I never read. It was all that stuff. Um, it says, I never let my schooling interfere with my education. Mark Twain. Yeah. You know, and I, my, uh, <laughs> my, I mean, you're in a school with that quote up. Does that, you kind of get odd looks? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, what I would, what I would basically say is when you look at me teaching and again, and I, I don't think here's what I'll tell you. Yeah. I don't think I'm the best teacher. I don't think I'm a great teacher or anything like that. I'm, I'm very compassionate. Right. And, and again, it, it comes across as, I don't want to say mean, but one of those, you were talking about how kids write things. Mm -hmm. uh, it's direct. And, and I say things not to harm, but it's like, 
I'm, I'm not going to sit here and like, and I coddle you and all that. Like, look, if this isn't good, I'm going to tell you it's not good because we need to fix it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, it's okay. And then you go thinking it's okay. So, so I got this quote and my dad bought me a calculator and all that. And when I read that, it goes back to, you're right. Like people go to school and they just sit there and they think like, well, why do I have to know this stuff? And, right. and, I, and I'm, a lot of it, you don't, you right. know, but when you go out and I, and I tell this kids at the end of the year, I'll say, you know, you can read about, you can read about the Grand Canyon and you can look in a picture and it's really great, but to travel to the Grand Canyon and look at it, that says something. Oh yeah. You know, you, you can, you can listen to the radio and listen to an ocean, but to hear the power of, of a wave break, that says something. Right. So my big thing is like, yes, the schooling, it, it's important. But your education goes out from actually experiencing life. Yeah. You know, and that probably sounds hippie, but I'm telling you, like, it's the, the truth. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is going out and experiencing life. Mm -hmm. And you get a lot of kids that kind of, uh, I mean, they're, they're into that kind of angle, mm -hmm. you know, where a lot of, uh, you know, you, you, you got the state that's telling you, you got to teach a certain curriculum. There's certain standards that you got to meet. I understand that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But there's a buddy of mine who I've had on the podcast before I've been on his podcast. His name is Hal Bowman and he's got a program called teach like a rock star. Okay. And, uh, if you ever get a chance to go to it, he's incredible. Actually, I'll recommend that he bring you on his, but he brings teachers on his podcast all the time. But he talks about, you know, are you going to be the one, the mm -hmm. one teacher that's going to make a difference in that kid's life? Meaning when the kid shows up, are they going to get, you know, a, a little bit of a hug? Are you going to look them in the eye and say their name? Yeah. Um, and that kind of stuff. Um, it, which again, isn't being taught whether the teachers just aren't aware of it or it's just not not something that people are on top of or thinking mm. about. Uh, when I got into car sales, one of the things I understood was I thought I was a pretty good salesman up until then. Yeah. You know, I, my father always told me that if you ever want to make more than the CEO or the owner of the company, get into sales and learn how to sell the product and do mm -hmm. it better than anybody else. Um, I always thought I was a pretty decent salesperson, but man, when it came, yeah, being a salesperson is one thing. Being a closer is another good point. Yeah, you know, absolutely. and actually closing the deal, mm. uh, which in the car business you had to do, you had to figure out a way to get him to the end zone. Otherwise you didn't put food on the table. Right. You right. know? And then when you're in a situation like that, you figure it out faster. You find something else to do Yeah, real quick. That's, that's a, that's a tough, tough business. Sales. It is. Cause, cause it's, cause again, I mean, I remember talking, I keep bringing up my parents. I don't mean to, but sure. like they, so they passed away last mm -hmm. year, tragically and all this. Mm, I'm sorry. So like a lot of things I, I always think about my parents and I remember him sitting there saying, you know, it's tough. You can be top salesman, top salesman. You're not top salesman or your slide, your sales start to slide a little bit. They're like, well, what are you doing differently? It's like, yeah. well, nothing that, you know what I mean? It's, it's, he wrote a zero every month. Yeah. Every yeah. day the, the slate is wiped clean and it's uh, you, you, yeah, your stature can change. I mean, there, there's other things that go into that, like business culture and office culture mm -hmm. and things of that nature that, you know, if if you have a culture that you feel like you're going to be fired out of a cannon because your sales numbers slip within the yeah. first week after you had a rock star month, yeah, that's not a culture you want to be in. But that's mm -hmm. a whole set of uh, other set of uh, stories to tell. But <clears throat> talking about uh, you know the impressions that you've had and shaping that angle that you bring to the classroom every day. Um, where did the the practicality continue on that road with talking about sharing real information with students? You know. Why do you think they, do you feel that like they're coming to the classroom thirsty and hungry to, to hear more? Are they really interested in the subject matter or the method through which you teach? If that makes sense. Yeah. You, you know, I, I think both, and again, and I don't, again, I don't think I'm a great teacher. You know what? I think I'm probably a salesman, right? You know, I'm selling a product that a lot of them don't like, but you know, and, I, and in a lot of ways it is, you know, and I was talking to the students just happened today and I, I kind of like, I'll, I try to express things to him gradually through the year, you know, mm -hmm. once we build a little more rapport, but I, I told him one of the kids mentioned, you know, we just talk, talk about a bunch of nonsense in here. I go, oh, what do you mean? Like, like, we don't talk about like anything like important. Like we have the notes, but then we just talk about stuff. Like, oh, like anything on your mind? Yeah. So we were talking about, um, I, I forget what we were talking about today, maybe the Mars Rover or something. And finally I broke it down. I said, you want to know why we talk about nothing and why we just hang out in here? They always seem like, it feels like we're just hanging out. <laughs> I'm like, Studies show that you guys can only focus for about 45 minutes. Classes are about 55 minutes. Yeah. There's a problem there. So 10 minutes is you guys just basically sitting there wanting to be somewhere else. Yeah. So during the whole time, I'll sit there and then, yeah, I'll be like, hey, did you hear? This is what happened to me. So I kind of break the monotony of it, talk to them a little bit. And then we go, oh, let's get back to the notes. And then they refocus on the notes. Mm -hmm. And I think going back to teachers, like kind of forgetting, I think the biggest thing is they forget that students are people. 
Yeah. You know, and, and I get that you're supposed to have like teacher student. And, and I'll tell you, like my students will understand that there is that difference, but they're also people, you know, they're having bad days, good days and all that. So I think when you start looking at them as people first, it understands. So as people, they're sitting here wondering, why do I have to know about history? This yeah. stuff's stupid. What kind of reactions do you have from your fellow uh, teachers and such? Because you're different. I, for sure. Am I that different? Like, you are. I really? think you are. Yeah. I mean, it's a, you, you kind of, you're, you're, you're no nonsense, but you do have empathy and compassion, yeah. right? You, you, you're, you're saying the, the compassion lives in the fact that you're no nonsense, that you're, mm. you're going to tell them, look, you need to hear the hard truth sometimes that sometimes this just isn't good. Let's go around and figure out how to make it better. Okay. Yeah. Learn how to do stuff. There was a, a quote that I learned from a guy named Grant Cardone, he, uh, who I had on the show a couple months ago. And he's another one of those guys like your buddy in Miami. He's actually from Miami or lives in Miami. And he's, a, you know, approaching billionaire status, mm -hmm. has his own jet and everything. But he says, man, he says he was one of, he made his name on selling, on teaching how to sell. And he goes, I hate sales. I don't <laughs> like selling. Yeah. And he goes, I if you want to really get good at something, get great at what you hate. And I'm going, it's That's, true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because when you do find the thing that you love, uh, it'll just, yeah, it'll be, you'll, you'll have all those practical skills that help mm. you get better at it. Well, that, and that's like with the whole practical thing. And again, like if you look behind you, you're going to see a list of names, you know, and, and I say like, I, people are in the whole idea of like test retakes and all that. And the right. method is there. It's like, oh, they, they did poorly and then they'll retake it and then they relearn it. And the idea is there, yeah. but then there's a human element where they're, well, I'll just fail and I'll just take it again. You know, and so that's a struggle. So behind us, we've got a wall of the students who are going to be retaking a test. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at those names, right? Right. And some of them are already taken them. Now I've got a couple kids, by a couple, more than two handfuls of kids who are failing the class. Right. Already. Yeah. Now how many classes do you, are you running? Just the one? Four. Four classes. Yes, yeah, so okay. so about four classes. And with that said, only three of those kids who are failing have their name up there. Right. The rest of them aren't even going to take a test retake. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that starts early on in all that. And up on the corner, I have like their homework assignments. I give them to be in the beginning of the month and they're due at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids fail at that. And I understand. And that's, I talk to you, to the parents about let, let them fail. Failing is okay. It's actually pretty good in the beginning. Right. And through time, the practical purpose is they're going to realize that I need to start budgeting my time. Yeah. You know, and a lot of kids jump to eighth grade and they study or, or they get good grades without studying. And that, I mean, that's a broken system. Yeah. Like they don't study. They're getting A's and B's. A's are for those who master the material. Where if I drop down dead, you can teach us material. Can yeah. you? Well, then you don't deserve an A. Right. So I do that. And right now they get overwhelmed and all that. Slowly, they're going to start finding, okay, I've got this, this assignment due. It's pretty simple. I'm going to get it done at the beginning of the month. Check it off. We're done. And then all of a sudden they start their time, time management where history, not important. Science, not important. Time managing your life and bills and all that. I mean, that's, that's important stuff. Yeah. It's practical. Yeah. So, yeah. and, and that's the big thing of, so the, so skills. the subject matter is kind of secondary. The primary thing you're teaching are practical life skills, like what you're talking yeah, about. And, and that's, way. Like I didn't get into teaching because I wanted to make a bunch of historians. Right. I got into, <laughs> teaching, I got into teaching history because I like the topic. Yeah. You know, but like, that's I get, where your passion That's your thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I just watching discovery channel when I was younger, whatever. So yeah. I like that material, Yeah. but I didn't get into teaching to teach the material. Right. You know, I got into teaching to teach, people. Right. You know? See, if I could teach kids, if I can get in front of a classroom of kids and just t teach them the fundamentals of selling, I would be, I would have a field day. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that, and that, that I can see why we were talking before about yeah. sales is important for every aspect. Everything. Talking, analytical, public speaking. Yeah. Like that's a big thing. We have a lot of talking going on in the class. When, when we do presentations, yeah. kids are terrified in the beginning because typically what happens, you know, they give a presentation, kids dreaming about, you know, being somewhere else, not paying attention. <laughs> then all of a sudden they're done. Everyone starts clapping. This kid's like, yeah, yeah, good job. Like I wasn't paying attention, but it sounds great guys. Yeah. You know? So, so what we do, nothing much has changed. Yeah. Right. I was like, <laughs> all right, great, man. You're talking about colonies. Love it. Sweet. So but what we do up here is we get these people, the, the audience. Yeah. So they're all doing projects. They don't want your project to be the best. Yeah. You know, so they start asking questions like, whoa, whoa, whoa this is, this isn't accurate. This is right. wrong. What would you do if this happened? So now they're up here having to defend themselves you know, and I and make sure it's not, you're, you're not going to be a bully because mm -hmm. don't forget, you're going to get up there and then I'll ask, start asking questions and we'll see what happens, you know? Right. So they're up there defending themselves, trying to find the reason. And the big thing is don't stammer, don't look around, thinking on your feet, being able to do that. Because I tell them when you go for a job interview in high school, in college, whatever, you're going to sit there and they're going to ask you a question. 
I, I don't, I don't know. You yeah. know, and it's like, no man, think, think on your yeah. feet. How, how can you spin it? Even if you're talking and thinking while you're talking and then you find your answer. Or even saying, I, an, I don't know in a way that actually sells them better on you. Yeah. 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 You know, and, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't know what that might be right now, but I think that I have the resources to be able to find that answer. Yeah, actually, absolutely. I mean, they're, they're, I didn't know all the answers when a customer, a customer would throw me a curveball. I'd be like, you know what? I'm not going to try and BS you. Yes. That's the one thing that you can remember about me. I don't know the answer to that question, but I can find out for you. Is that, is that fair? Yeah. You know, that's a b- big thing in teaching too. I think mm-hmm. teachers are scared of not knowing. Yeah. Of not they're knowing. scared of failing. You mean? Yeah. Right. And yeah. It's funny. Like, and I, and I always get this. So I used to teach sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And, and I, I love that because, so I know I have some knowledge on sixth, seventh, and eighth grade now. So I can say, hey, it's just like in seventh grade when you learned this, mm-hmm. same idea. We're just erasing names and all that. Right. But sometimes a kid will ask me a question and I don't know. They're like, well, you know, I'm not sure about that. Will you teach history? <laughs> yes. So I know every single fact from the history of the world that has ever happened. Yeah. I apologize for 6,000 years of human yeah. history. It's all My right bad. here, pal. Yeah. But, it, but it's, I think, I think people don't want to look stupid, you know? And of course not. And I think, and we were talking about, like, we were talking about freedom of press. Yeah. And again, the big thing in the class is, again, I, I told at parent night where a lot of kids aren't going to know the facts and that's okay. A lot of parents don't know history and they're doing okay. We live yeah. in a nice, nice area, you know, but we're talking about freedom of press and how it's important to have that. Some countries don't have it. And I showed them a scale about where media spectrums fall, like the big name broadcasts and all that. And look, they lean left, they lean, lean right. They're really left. They're really right. And I'm like, most people are honest where they know this, like the whole, whole thing before fake news came out, people understood the media, yeah. you know? So I, w- I don't want to be an idiot. I don't want to be wrong. So if I'm watching this news broadcast that's disagreeing with me, well, they're the idiots. I'm going to go to this one that agrees with what I think. That's you know? right. And I think teachers are scared of sometimes saying, I don't know. And that's the thing. I used to work for a news talk station in Las Vegas, and I got heavily into the politics and everything for a long time. I even got into the the whole, you know, I guess you could say pseudo conspiracy stuff towards the uh, end of the uh, ten, first 10 years of the millennium. And after a while, I, I, st- I took a step back, and this is something I teach my kids all the time. I say, look, you can only control the 360 degree sphere around you. That's mm-hmm. it. Okay, so why don't you just concern yourselves on the things you can control? You yep. can control the election every four years. There are people literally on Facebook that spend most of their time challenging people in comment sections all freaking day long. Mm-hmm. For I don't know what they get out of it, honestly. Yeah, you know, right. they don't want to be wrong. They want to want to appear looking like an idiot. So, and they know who they're who I'm talking about. And I've asked them point blank, "What do you get out of this? What's what's the what's the big thing for you? I mean, you know, just feeling right." I mean, right. is that really all you're getting? And then, you know, being able to uh, stand on a, on a platform piously and call the other person a, an idiot? Right. Uh, you know, it's pride. It's really what it boils down to. And you, you said something actually in your parent night that I forgot about up until now, failing is okay. That's one of the things that I wanted to talk about in, a, in an offshoot of this podcast was the fact that I felt like, you know, my formative years in high school and everything that I was a pretty bit, I was, I wasn't really hitting it out of the park with high school at all. Mm. Right. I might, I was kind of living in my brother's shadow. He had a, uh, he, he always had an identity with through uh, music and playing the piano and stuff, uh, always in the clubs and the bands and always had extracurricular activities. Jim, not so much. Mm. I was the, I was the drummer. I became a drummer around age 13, 14 years old which was always my thing. It was part of my identity growing up. And I'm big on identity and purpose and identifying that for kids. Um, So moving forward with that, when I got out of high school, I went to college for two years. It just was, it it was like, yeah, this is not going to work, you know? Um, And because of that, because it was hammered into me over and over and over again, Mm. that if you don't go to college, you don't get a degree, you're going to be a loser. Um, Yeah, I carried that with me. It was damaging to my psyche until I got into radio, which was my thing. Again, another thing that that was a big bolster of my identity and my purpose. I had new purpose, something I was really good at. Um, That introduced me to entrepreneurship and everything like that came along with it because I wanted to make make more money that I could in radio. Um, So with that being said, when I was in the blue collar trade, which I did, I was an electrician for a while. I did low voltage with my father putting in phone systems. <clears throat> and ultimately what that, I was going into all these white collar office jobs, doctors, mm. attorneys. And you want to talk about an inferiority complex. Right. And my father once told me, he said, my father was a blue collar guy. Yeah. And we had a very comfortable life because of it. But they yeah. always told, you're going to go to college. They, that was their, that their, their, 
self-identity was tied up in us going to college. Mm. And a lot of parents were back yeah. then. Back and, then, and again, you know. diff- different generation. Totally. It's, it's like, I don't want you, and it's a good living, but I want you to, to be easier for you. That's right. Like, yeah, it's an easier ride. And it really is. And yeah. I've, I've met people who have done the whole tried and true tested path, and yeah. it's not because they hate what they do. Mm-hmm. My, you know. my, my parents, and I haven't expressed this to the kids yet, again, kind of a process just going through the year, but my parents said, you know, you better, you better like what you do. You're mm-hmm. going to spend more time at work than you do at your family, which is kind of screwed up in itself, right. you know, and I'll tell the kids later on, like, we're going to talk about what would you be willing to die for mm-hmm. uh, when we get to uh, American Revolution and all that. That's deep, man. Well, yeah, right. I, I've never think I've ever, ever had a topic well, like that in high school well, and I tell or them, middle school. And, and, and many of them, like, it starts out joking, but many are like, I would die for my family. I would die for this, you know, because I asked, what would you protest for? And a lot of them like, oh, I'd, I'd protest for leggings. Leggings was a big one. This happened a couple of years back. Mm-hmm. Leggings was a big one. I'm like, okay, are you willing to die for it? Like, no. I'm like, well, then you're not willing to protest for it, <laughs> right? So then, so that became a big issue. And that was one of the things that actually happened. This was two years ago. Leggings yeah. weren't allowed. So then, of course, American Revolution, we're talking about uh, political uh, propaganda. We're talking about all this stuff. So I challenged the kids and they actually... They're like, all right, well, we're wearing leggings to school. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, all right, but you understand that you're going to be breaking the rules. And if you do, if you get written up, you know, I can't help you. I'm supporting your decision to do this, but I can't, I can't say, like I told you, like, it's your choice to do this, you know? Right. They go, we're doing it. I'm like, hey, I, I support it. And the right? administration's going, ah, Savelik's doing his revolutionary right. war thing yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Savelik's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so we're sitting there, and all of a sudden, I mean, it, it was a great lesson because then they turned to social media. Yeah, the propaganda back then, where they're talking about, we're talking about the uh, Sons of Liberty, mm-hmm. and they're doing the uh, letters of correspondence, and the Committee of Correspondence. We're spreading out all this information. Today, it's Facebook, yeah. Twitter, yeah. Committee of Correspondence. So then, all of a sudden, kids are out of their schools. were doing it, and I'm like, yep, lost my job. I guess I'll start updating my resume. Yeah, uh, and they came in, and a lot of kids got in trouble for it. Um, and they're like, no, it was worth it because we got a point across. And you know, and now kids can wear leggings. Right? Is it because of that? I don't know. But the fact that the kids were willing to stand up and do it, I thought that was important. So going back, I don't even know how I got on that track, but uh, somebody said that you're going to be at work more than you are um, with your family. So you better laugh every day. And I'll, I'm, I'm lucky. I come to work every single day and I'm talking to eighth graders. So I'm never getting older. I'm getting, I'm staying as an eighth grader Yeah. and I laugh every single day, you mm-hmm. know, and I think that's, I think that's really important. And for people that go to college, because well, you have to, or you're a loser. Yeah. No, you do what you like. You do yeah. what you love. You know, and you might not make the money you want, but you're going to You'll be find ha- a way. If, if money becomes your motivator, you'll find a way to make it happen. Yeah. And those are the things that a lot of people are thinking inside the box these days about money. We're being, we know what we're being sold to, mm-hmm. you know, what's being sold to us. Um, and that's one of the things I, I tell my kids all the time. And, and this is probably why I like having you in my daughter's life because there's only so many ways you can tell your wife that she's beautiful until another guy at the supermarket hits on her. Right. Then right. she realizes, oh, wow, <laughs> I got him. Yeah, still right. Got it. yeah, right. That's funny. When it comes from dad, it's mm-hmm. not cool. It's not as salient as it should be. And they, they don't really run with it. And oh, here he goes with the sales thing again. And in, it's in like, one ear, out the other. Right. You know, and I kind of, she had an issue, not an issue with a teacher, but the teacher that we went through, I think it was her math teacher last year, uh, basically wrote, spelled out, here's how to get a really good grade in my class. Go through these things. If you failed on a test, if you're showing the initiative and coming to my room during your lunch and going above and beyond and, and showing me that you, you're going to do well, yep. okay? I'm not and demanding that you know this stuff and be able to memorize it and spew mm-hmm. it back out at me. I want to at least know you understanding and that you're willing to take the extra steps to yeah. understand it. Right. And I, you know, she was like, I just don't like her. I just don't like her. And I sat her down. I said, Cammie, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm going to give you a little bit of a lecture here. Okay. I, you've heard me say before, it's a sell or be sold world we live in. All right. Unfortunately for a majority of Americans, they're being sold to not many people doing the selling. For you, it's going to be different. This is how you're going to get the things you want in life. Mm-hmm. You're going to learn how to sell. I said, she's pretty much told you how to sell her. Yeah. If you had been listening, which is a big element of sales, you got two of these and one of these, mm-hmm. use, listen twice as much. She told you how to sell her, mm-hmm. okay? Just do what she's asking you to do. Yeah. 
Okay, because one on one versus in the classroom with the rest of your peers is going to be vastly different. If anything, you're Absolutely. probably you're going to learn that she's actually probably not that bad. And wouldn't <laughs> right. you know it? Yeah, one of her favorite teachers. That's <laughs> it, the end of the year. That's so funny because, like you were talking about, it's always come from me, and that's why I have the the letters or the the comments that the kids make. I'm like, look, yeah. I'm an old guy telling these kids, you are not old. Well, I'm older. Are you like 26? Yeah, 26. <laughs> sounds good. I eat my vegetables. I do push-ups. No, uh, so that's why I have the kids from last yeah. year say, "Like, look, this class is different. It's harder. You're going to have to work, work, work. And once you work, 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 it's actually easy. Yeah, you know. And that's why I do it because they're going to hear it from every single teacher. It's not the same as last year and all that. So it's funny that you describe that teacher that way because that's me. Yeah, you know. And, and this is going to sound cruel, but so I have kids that fail the first test, and I. Told parents, hey, a lot of people are going to fail that first test. You know, class average was a 68%, you mm -hmm. know? And I said, at the end, like, some kids said, well, I didn't study, you know? And they were kind of in tears that they failed. I'm like, whoa, whoa, no tears here. Mm -hmm. You said you didn't study. You failed. So why are you, are you, are you crying because you didn't study? Or are you crying because you failed? You know, mm -hmm. big difference. So I have, I, have, I have students every single day coming at lunch. And I work with students all the time. Yeah. And the reason I do that, it's, I'm not trying to fail kids by any means. And the big thing is, whether it's a trade school, whether it's college, whether it's whatever, they need to learn skills of how to learn information. So what it is, is first I go over like, hey, like this is the information, all that. And I help them with the test just so they're not going to fail. But then it's like, okay, how do we break down the knowledge that applies to you? Mm -hmm. You know, because, you know, I don't, I don't do study guides. And the kids kind of freak, what do you mean there's no study guide? Like, well, Billy studies different than than Sarah, so why am I gonna give you guys the same study guide? Mm -hmm. And that is the biggest struggle. That's why early on kids are failing because it's not a due date, do the study guide when the test is due. So a lot of kids do it right now, they're doing it the day before the test is due, so it's not helping them. That'll be a skill they'll develop to kind of manage and do it gradually. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, this, I'm still failing. What can I do differently? And I'll work with them. Well, you like music, you like songs. Why are you sitting here just doing definitions? You make a poem right? Make some sort of lyrical yeah. um, um, sonnet or something to help you out. You're over here always doodling in my class. If you're going to doodle, doodle something with the notes. So when I see your, your study guide, I want to see all pictures. Yeah. You have something like mercantilism, the idea of controlling trade to gain wealth. Very exciting social study stuff, right? Right. Right. But you draw a picture over here explaining it so you can understand it. And that's the big thing with the that information is not important. It's developing that skill of how to remember and learn new information. Ted, that makes sense to you. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I mean, what's your chicken scratch? Yeah. I mean, because mm -hmm. not everyone's learned the same way. Yeah. And and going with the whole failure thing, that's why failure is important. Oh, so, extremely. So, thank you. So, Amen. But so you focus. Yeah. You focus about businesses, right? Companies. I'm gonna do a little. I'm gonna do an applause there. I don't know what that is. Okay. Yeah. I like it. Um. So so you talk about that. So somebody goes into business, and that's a risk. I, yeah. I can't imagine the fear. There's I excitement. Own all right. So, so there's excitement when you're starting in a fear, right? Like what? what if it doesn't work or something? I don't know if it was fear because I'm, I try not to be fear based. It is a risk. Uh, but so is, I always tell people, well, so is also having one, a single income source. True. It's a massive risk. True. Case in point GM. Okay. Yep. Everybody's on strike. They've got one single source of income. And that's it. Now, now what are they doing? They're sitting, sitting outside in the heat, holding a sign, not getting paid. Yeah. You know, and that's, you look at teachers. I don't know many teachers who just teach right most teachers i know have some sort of dual income mm -hmm. driving for driving for uber coaching doing something you know because it, it dual it, like one income is pretty challenging you know as a teacher yeah so you know going into a business or going into a classroom whatever failing is always scary and i think yeah. it's the idea of like i feel like a failure but no it's kind of facing mom and dad right and, and that's yeah. why and that's why i tell them like and i get that you know and and it's like, well, I want to do well because mom, mom and dad are going to be mad. Forget mom and dad. Yeah. Sadly enough, there's going to be a time when mom and dad aren't there. Mm -hmm. So when you fail, are, is it okay because they're not going to be disappointed or whatever? And, and I tell, like, the kids are so scared of failing to disappoint their parents. And I tell them, like, your parents are going to love you. Yeah. You know, they, they want the best for you. And yes, they want you to do well, so they might be angry. But if they knew that you were that stressed out about it, I don't think that they would be putting that pressure on you. Yeah. And when you look at people like failing, so a company, you start a company, you fail. Many people might say, hey, I tried and I'm done. Somebody else might say, okay, why did I fail? Oh, I didn't do this. I didn't market the right way. I didn't do the, uh, get the word out, whatever. So now I need to try again. Yeah. So the same thing, the study guides. Well, this didn't work. So you can do the same thing because a lot of kids are going to fail the next test because they're going to do the same exact thing. 
and they're gonna fail the next one, same exact thing, until finally goes, this isn't working, what can I do? And you know, my, my grandfather started a business, mm-hmm. and my grandma ended up, ended up starting a business. And my mom didn't graduate high school because she ended up having to run the restaurant that they were starting. And I think that when you fail, it, it, it makes you better. It a, does. A professional baseball player, if he's hitting a home run, every time he swings at a fastball, fantastic. He strikes out every time at a curveball. At practice, he's going for curveballs. Yeah. You know, it, it's just going to make you better. And I think we should embrace failure rather than being scared of it. Because if you're scared of it, you're going to stay in this lane where you can only do the things you can do. And I tell the kids, if, if you go through school or you go through anything, baseball, sports, and you don't fail, if you don't try for a team and get cut, you're not trying out for the right team. Well, there's two sides to that. You know, with the kids in the class, you're going to get the kids that always win. Okay, mm-hmm. that always pass and everything, and they pass with flying colors. Okay, for you kids, you guys need to understand that eventually you're going to get punched in the face. Yeah. It's inevitable. Yep. Okay, and you got to understand the emotional processing that goes along with that because you haven't had that comeuppance yet. Mm-hmm. You're really good at doing stuff in here the way we tell you to do it according to the way we, we tell you to do it. For you kids that have failed you probably feel pretty dang bad because it's you're being judged based on you know how well you can swim and you know you're a you're a, a giraffe okay yeah, right. and you need to understand you are learning an integral life lesson mm. failure is good yeah. because when you do win it's going to be that much sweeter and you're going to win that's the thing right okay there. it's going to happen and what i always tell my kids is that uh, if they you know i said look your job right now is to do the best you can in school, <clears throat> of course. But if you come home with a failing grade, yeah, are we going to be upset? Sure. Okay, it's part of life. Mm-hmm. It's it's you're just going to have to accept it. But I'm going to tell you right now, and I tell both all my all three of my kids: if you fail and you get a failing grade, it does not define you. Right. Okay. This is how you pick yourself up. But what does define you is how you bounce back mm-hmm. and how you move on from that that F or whatever it is that you got. Yeah. Okay. And I don't want you to go to college because everybody's telling you that you got to go. Okay. Mm-hmm. You're going to have massive amounts of peer pressure in high school. What college are you going to? What are you going to do? With it? And making up your mind. You're 18 years old. You don't have a yeah. clue about right. what you want to spend the rest of your life doing. I don't, unless yeah. it really is ingrained in you. Yeah. Okay. I had no way. I, I had an inkling that I wanted to be a drummer, but I knew the chances of that because I was hammered into my head that you have something to fall back on, Jim. Yeah. Right. Um, was very small. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then I got into the radio. It was similar to what I wanted to do. It was in the entertainment business. And I, I made a career in doing that and everything was for fine and dandy. Yeah. With my kids, it's telling them, look, I want you to spend, if you feel like you want to go to college, then let's find something that's affordable, mm-hmm. that you're not going to go in deep debt over, yeah. that you know we can pay for, help you pay for it. We're not going to get you in, in massive amounts of debt yeah. just to go to a name brand school. It's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Unless, of course, you get a scholarship, then, hey, go, go knock yourself yeah, out. Yeah, right. I'm not saying that at all. But if there's a time, that, you know, there's probably a good chance that mom and dad are not going to be able to pay for this because we were a single-income family yeah. on a radio man's budget. Okay, yeah. so we didn't we didn't really save much. We are kind of saving for mom and dad right now. So, <laughs> right. so you don't have to take care of us later. Yeah, right. So if you get to the point where you're not sure, I don't want you going. I want mm-hmm. you to go out and get a full-time job. I want you to find things to do. Live on rice and beans, beans and rice. Yeah. And live with two or three other people in an apartment somewhere to figure out who you are. Mm-hmm. I want you to do that. Yeah. Okay. You, you know, I had a, I had a student <clears throat> took the first test and came up to me and said, Mr. S, this is the first test I've ever failed. Mm-hmm. And I, right away, I gave her a big high five. I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and she's like, huh? Well, I'm like, <clears throat> good. It means that there's a little bit of a challenge here. You know, otherwise you're not really learning. I said, so what do we need to do? I didn't study enough. You know, mm-hmm. I kind of just looked over my notes, reviewed and all that. Like, so got to start studying. She came in every one study session. She just got hundred percent on the last test. Mm-hmm. You know, and the idea is I want them to start weaning off coming in for study sessions so they can start doing it on their own. But, you know, and failing, failings, you know, it's not always an F, you know? So I have kids who might be considered gifted, which again, I hate that term. I, the term gifted is the yeah. worst term ever because, hey, they're gifted. You're not. Like, 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 you're not gifted. No, like that kid's gifted at standing up for people who are right. being bullied. That kid over there is- And, and you're giving them a false positive. Yeah, yeah. right? So, so I had a, a student who um, got a B. Now, to, that, to them, that's failing. You know? And I think 
and we have an A board over here and I always tell the kids, I'm always iffy about it. Mm -hmm. So the first time there were only like five names on that board. Right. You know, and I also have the, I hate, I hate social studies board and it's starting to switch more A's and less people that I hate social studies. <laughs> so that, that's good. That's the, that's the goal. If it, if it switches, I know I'm in trouble. I need to retire. I right? go into sales then. <laughs> so, so I, I said, my problem with the A board is like, it's for people who want to get an A. And I had a, I had a kid who was upset. You know, and again, kids are crying about this. I'm like, and, and to go a little bit deeper, I tell kids when some kids upset and I, was, I just told the kids today, they go, man, I, well, I get, I get so like scared for the test. I'm like, listen, there's a kid in a hospital right now who has cancer. Yeah. This is, it's not that bad. This is an eighth grade social studies test. Yeah. It, it's not that bad. And, and like, but you know, that not many teachers would put it in perspective like that. I think, I, again, I, mean, I, think, but I think that's what I'm saying is that you, 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 I love the fact that, you know, I don't, I'm not that good of a teacher. My gosh, I think your legacy is going to show you that. Yeah. You made a, an impression well, on a lot of people. Hopefully saying stuff like that. Yeah. It's like, dude, you got to, you know, teaching a kid to put it in perspective like that, that there are yeah. worse things than getting a B. Yeah. And, and, and that go back, going back to your daughter <laughs> where you fail, you might be upset and the fail, the failure is not the problem. Yeah. If you allow that to become a continuous thing, then you're not learning how to change your ways or whatever it might be. And, and that is the problem, yeah. you know? So one failure here and there. So my problem with my A board is, hey, the kids who get an A put their name up there. But the kids, and I make sure I make a comment to these kids, the kid who fails and works and works and works and works and gets up B. Yeah. And the kid who is gifted, right, doesn't really work and gets an A minus, a B plus. That kid who worked and worked and worked and got the B, they should have their name up there. Right. You know, and I try to express it to the kid because in the, in the big scheme of life, that kid who's working and working and working, getting a B, and this kid who's sliding by and getting an A, give me that kid in any job who, who works and gets the B, they're going to be more successful nine times, 10 times out of 10. Yeah. You know, and I, I think that's the, so the A board bothers me a little bit. And that's why I, I then try to address like, look, if you're working hard and the B is the best thing you can do, that's better than getting an A in my opinion. But no. Do they understand that? I think they do. In the beginning, they don't. I think, yeah. again, I think the whole year is a process. That's why the whole year is in the beginning, maybe I'm mean, maybe mm -hmm. class is challenging. It's hard. And once they figure it out, it, it starts to click. You know what? Maybe if I start doing my study guides, maybe if I study a little bit more here and they start to manage their time, you know, the, the best thing is when they go up there and you were talking about, um, how you, you want to earn something. Mm -hmm. And I told them a kid who goes up there, uh, one kid was upset because, you know, like 10 kids in the class got their name up on the board and he missed it by a half point. And he was uh, arguing his point to me. And, and I love it. I, after a test, I say, I want you to come up and tell me why I'm wrong. Like, <laughs> I love it. Because, because I, Sell me on this. Well, I, I'm sitting here. I'm like, I'm like, I just graded 120 tests. Yeah. And I'm trying to get them back as fast as possible for you. Because if you guys worked hard, it's only fair for me as a teacher to work hard to get it back to you. So we can get the feedback back to you. Yeah. So he's like, well, I think this and this. And a lot of times I will say, you know what? Sure. Because they're challenging a teacher, which is scary enough. Yeah. So they could be wrong. I'm like, you know, I, I didn't think about that. Good point. And I'm just like, totally wrong. But yeah, here's a point. But you know what? I'll give you, I'll give you that. Yeah. yeah. So, so this, <clears throat> this one student I was just talking to, he's really upset because, am I too quiet? I feel no, like no, you're fine. You're fine. Um, I just, I got to clear my this, throat a lot. This kid's upset because he was a half point away. Mm -hmm. And again, almost to tears. I'm like, man, it's eighth grade social studies. This stuff does not matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You know, not like today, today like we talked about, uh, the uh, motion sensor. Uh, like we were talking about the Proclamation Act. Yeah. That stuff's not, do you know what the Proclamation Act is? No, uh, you know, if I, had a, if I had to venture a guess something about, no, I don't. There you go. I love yeah. it. Nice, right? Yeah. Hey, he's admitting he's wrong. I, I, I'll admit I'm wrong. Yeah, so yeah. most people don't. Do you know what eminent domain is? Uh, I can probably loosely explain it. All right. Yeah. So we're talking about how England just kicked everyone out of their property because for government, it was better that they remove themselves from that property. Yeah. That's not important. Eminent domain, widening this road over here and taking mm -hmm. people out of his backyard, that's important. Yeah. You know? So I'm explaining to this kid and all that. So he's upset that he didn't get on the A board. And I'm like, look, you'll get there. Just keep working hard. And the best thing is when they try and try and they fail and fail and they finally get on that board, the excitement they feel. Oh, yeah. And I tell him, like, isn't it better to earn it than just have it given to you? Yeah. And, then, and, every, and every time, like halfway through the year, they, they start getting, they go, it does. Yeah. It, it, it's better to feel like I've earned this rather than, oh, here's my A. Here's my A. But that's yet, an, do you understand that what you're teaching them and understanding that they can come to you and argue their grade is yet something you're teaching them? 
I guess it is. I, I struggle with I struggle with compliments because I, I, I. No, but it's, I mean, that's not. I'm, I'm just acknowledging something here that that's yet another lesson they're going to learn. That's salesmanship right there. Okay, now I got to figure out how I pitch to him that he not only might be wrong, but I need to figure out how I can kick up my my grade a notch. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's one of the things I had a girlfriend in. Um, it went to Yukon up in Connecticut and she got a bad grade on something. And I said, argue it. <clears throat> I can't argue it. Why not? Yeah. Go talk to the teacher. See what you can do. They say no. And, and it's, it's the same grade. Hey, exactly. You know, yeah. but at least you asked. Mm-hmm. And you know, when it's funny, cause a lot of people look at some of the guests I get on the podcast. How'd you get him? I asked. Yeah. It doesn't hurt to ask. If you need to learn how to how to pitch and frame something and give a value proposition, and then go for the jugular, go for the clothes. Okay, mm-hmm. after the dinner, drinks, and dancing's all done, it's time to yeah. finish things <laughs> up. Okay, <clears throat> that's how you get stuff in life. Okay, how to be persuasive, how to how to do all that stuff. We're sold to that. That is not bad, but it's not even taught to us. Yeah. So you, by the virtue of you doing that, it's an invaluable lesson because when I tell my daughter, well, go argue the grade. She's, yeah. she's arguing. I'm like, why are you expending energy arguing with me? I'm not, I'm not changing the grade. I'm not right? changing the grade. Yeah. I said, but you can go to the teacher and make a case mm-hmm. and say, you know what? I think in this particular question right here where you marked it wrong, I, I kind of got it this way because of this. Is there any way we can go ahead? And I always teach them about the, the art of the head nod. Can we go ahead and just change that to a correct answer? Is that something that we can make sure we- yeah, Yes, sir. I will, I will do that. He just put like the Aladdin genie hex right. on me. Okay. It's psychology. Man. Yeah, absolutely. So, but the, the virtue that you're doing that is, I think, amazing. I, I was really excited because- uh, Did you do that a lot in college, like argue grades and stuff? And I already said I wasn't a good student. Yeah, I know, so, but yeah, that's- uh, no, um, no, I will, I will tell you. So- I had I had one teacher that that I really liked, and him and I would disagree on everything. He was one polar opposite of the political spectrum, and I was the other polar opposite. Right. And one day we were discussing immigration. One of us think that there should be no borders mm-hmm. at all. One of us think that we should have tight borders. So we're going back and forth, and we're debating this. And then the next day he comes in, he goes. Well, here, you said something. Let me tell you something. And he's going to prove me wrong. Mm-hmm. All right, which again, I hope so. He's a doctor, right? He's a doctor of political science, I guess. I don't know. So he's sitting there and he goes, well, look at this. He's pro- doing all this information. And I said, did you do that outside of class? Like to prove me wrong? He goes, yeah. I'm like, okay. And, yeah. and I'm like, I won. Yeah. You know, um, and, he got but, but, inside his head. Yeah. And, and that class, we, we, had, we had the desks in a big circle. And he said, this class can be hard and difficult and blah, blah, blah. And a lot of kids just dropped this. I don't need that nonsense, right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stick it out. And then he's like, hey, now that they're gone, let's get to this class. And we sat in a circle and we just discussed politics and all these issues. And kids were, they were going all over. We were talking about sweatshops. We were talking about immigration. We we're talking about Iraq war. We we're talking about all this stuff. I'm like, no, I disagree with you. And, and that's a big thing. We do a lot of debates in here because mm-hmm. I think people are Facebook. Hey, I'm very tough behind a computer. I'm going to tell you why you're wrong all the day, blah, 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 blah. Yeah face-to-face, different tune. Yeah. So I'm trying to tell these kids to look somebody in the eye and there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, I disagree with you. Because then after our debates in here, I'm like, okay, is anybody dead? Okay, <laughs> we're, we're okay, right? So, so it's okay. People are going to disagree with you and that's okay. Difference of opinions and all that. Yeah. So there was a, I was really excited because one of my students wanted to do like an escape game or something like that. And I just heard about this the other day. So they come up and... It was one of their friends that told me. So I want to do the... Ex- w- wacky the, wave The lights keep on going guy. off. Yeah, that's all right. all right. There we go. Uh, so they want to do the escape game. And their mom said, no. Can't do it. He goes, well, well now listen here. Like, you, you don't have to give me a ride. Whoever gave me, has a ride for me already. <laughs> got value points. <laughs> right? And, 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 I was, and, I was gonna, and I'm going to do this. So rather than... I know we haven't cut the grass in a while. So I'll cut the grass when I get home. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll be gone for an hour and a half. That's it. All right, fine. Hour and a half, you can go. Mm-hmm. Hung up the phone, and apparently this kid goes, just totally Mr. Esther right there. Right? <laughs> and he goes, I was using like debate points and all that. And, and I'm like, and so when somebody told me, I brought it up to that student later, and I go, heard this happen. Like, yeah, so I was able to go and all that. And, and again, I think it's important to look people in the eye and just figure out how to discuss and have a conversation yeah. and, and, and 
be okay to have somebody say no and all that. But, and listen and yeah. listen to them and un- make them understand that you are listening. And, you yeah. know, and that's the, that's the big thing. So we just had our first graded debate in here and it was about um, North versus South. Mm-hmm. Where would you rather live? Education was in the North, not in the South. Manufacturing versus farming, all this stuff's going on. Religion. So the, the big thing was, somebody's like, man, people keep on coming at me and attacking me. I said, that's good. If everyone's saying, well, I disagree with you, I disagree with you, I disagree with you, that means people are listening to you. Mm-hmm. If you're the kid who no one's addressing you, like your point, you didn't bring anything to the table. Yeah. You know? So I think now, like now we're gonna be in the second debate soon, people will start wearing that as a badge of honor where I'm gonna get people to start arguing with me because then they can hear what I'm saying. You right. know, and I think that's important to have people disagree with you and understand that it's gonna be okay. Cause when they leave, they're gonna still gonna be friends. Yeah. So and that's the important thing to teach them is that, look, yeah. you can coexist with each other, even though you have different viewpoints, it's going to happen. Yeah. You don't want to become an ideologue. Well, and that's the thing. And, we're, and like my, my students will never know my political views. Right. Ever. Because it's not the teacher's place to express. Disperse that. Yeah. yeah not, like, so mm-hmm. they, just, they just wrote a paper for me and it's a variety of topics. Mm-hmm. And a teacher e- or a, a parent emailed me and I asked, uh, well, are they going to read this in class? Like, absolutely not. I said, because, I mean, there are heavy issues vaccines, immigration, gun control, um, LGBTQ and Mm -hmm. all these issues. And I think, I think parents fail to realize that their eighth graders are smarter than they give them credit for because they still view them as, as little sons, little daughters, but with social media and texting and all that, they have so much information now where it might be skewed and all that, but they're being exposed to so much more that they're starting to get an opinion on it. And, uh, they're sitting here and they're, and they're writing this paper and, I think the big thing is they're starting to have that outlet where they can just kind of talk and mm-hmm. feel like, hey, I've got some value and all that. But yeah, it does attribute value to it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's funny you brought up the um, you 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 the kid who Mister S'd their parent. Um, that's something I, I try and teach my middle son. Uh, we, he 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 is. Yeah, he could be annoying, and, and he, he kind of nudges at you every now and then. But I told him, I said, I I, I like the fact that you keep on trying. You treat by you keep on reframing what you want. And you come back at us yeah. and ask a different way. I said that's important, but you've asked us five times, and the answer is still no. So one should knock it off. You're, you're very resilient. <laughs> now you're just annoying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like it. I mean, when I sold cars or sold anything, it was asking. Uh, sometimes it was. I mean, they tell you it's eight to fifteen touches for a follow up from first contact before you can even move the ball down the field. Uh, in that business, it was, I would ask for the sale probably about three or four or five times. Okay. That and, makes sense. And, yeah. Cause sooner or later they either get tired of saying no yeah. or you sold your point. But I mean, again, it was also in the game of sales of explaining, I sold Mercedes and I saw, I explained the story of the brand, the story of the car, how all the different things kind of, I, st- I made it an experience. Yeah. So I sold the actual experience. That's because, big. That is big because yeah. when you go to the Lexus dealer or the BMW dealer, I'm counting on the fact that you're going to you're going to run into the yahoo who doesn't take that stuff seriously mm-hmm. and you're going to remember me because of the job i did in presenting this to you if i can't yeah. close you now there's probably going to be a good chance you'll come back yeah and do you find yourself doing that with the actual content the uh, the material that you're teaching there was a guy the reason why i asked and he kind of came and uh, popped into my head while we we're just talking here uh i went back to college before i moved to vegas when i was still in radio because i'm like well you know it's different i'll pay for it now let me see if i can get my degree yeah i took a history class with a guy who was just utterly enjoyable you looked forward to his class mm-hmm. and he had such a fervor and passion and way about you know describing american history that was it's like dude i don't want to take any notes because i don't want to miss anything yeah right, right you know um and i did very well in his class because of that because i felt his infectious passion it's like it's fun to watch somebody having fun yeah yeah you, you doing know, what they do I, I tell the kids uh it's important don't be in this class mm-hmm. be part of this class yeah you know and that's the big thing like so you said like you loved hearing this guy talk mm-hmm. and you probably participated in all that you sit back and you just sit there. You're in the class, but you're not part of it. Yeah. You know, and I think that's, I think that's important, what, what you're saying there. Well, I mean, do a lot of the teachers, you, what do you think you're really teaching at the end of the day? That's not social studies. Do you ever really think about you know, that? What's, what's the problem you're solving? You know, it's social studies in a different way. Again, eminent domain. Most eighth graders don't know what eminent domain is. And, and that's a life, life. They know if they know. It, they're a long duplex. <laughs> yeah, right. And now they're introduced to it because of the Proclamation Act, you know? Yeah. And- I, I teach a lot so that they understand current events now. 
Yeah. You know, we were talking about- um, You relativize it. I, I tried to, yeah. So, so why did the Crusades happen? Well, fight for the Holy Land. Why are Iran and Israel fighting? Well, fight for Gaza Strip. Why did the French and Indian War? Well, fighting for land. It doesn't change. Yeah. So history and social studies, it doesn't change. All you do is you're erasing dates and you're rewording it, but it doesn't change. Which should tell you kids that you should invest in real estate. But yes, anyway. a- absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Whether by blood and fighting or just <laughs> getting up enough money to buy land. Yeah, with a, with the college degree. That's right. right. Uh, or no, something there, or trade, or trade school. You know, I think, uh, I think the kids that come in here, and again, there, there are a lot of kids who don't like this class, don't yeah. like me, don't like social studies, whatever, and, and that's okay. You know, di- I, different vibe. So I have the I hate social studies board up there, and I say, hey, if you don't like social studies, put your name up there. Mm-hmm. You know, and there's a lot of kids up there. Now I'm looking at the names, and I could tell you that I could take down five of those names right now, right? Because they're in here, they're participating every day, and they don't. I don't think they realize they're enjoying it. And I think that's the big thing is like when you're a salesman selling cars, you're making them part of the sale. Yeah. Right. You're not talking to them. You're, you're talking with them. Yep. And I think that's the big thing. So a lot of kids will say that this is their favorite class walking into it and all that. And I think, I, I don't think it's, it's, it's not me. I don't think it is. I think it's, they have a chance to be them. You know, they have a chance to. But you set the tone. You set the culture for that. Yeah, I tried Culture, to. Cultures from the t- come from the top. I tried to. I almost put a hole in this wall today, actually, <laughs> um, trying to prove a point to them. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm like, guys, I'm literally about to stroke out here because you guys aren't getting this. So I'm, I ended up like being on top of a desk. Right. And I think that energy is a big one. There's a, there's a saying down or, or a poem down in the uh, workroom, and it was talking about how, you know, I've come to a scary realization how I am the important um, variable in that classroom where, like, I'm the energy. If I'm annoying, right? They're annoyed. If I'm sleepy, they're tired, you know? And I think that's a big part of it where I tell the kids, like, you know, if you guys come in here, you guys have a, have a monotone attitude. I'm not going to be a good teacher. Right. I I just, I'm feeding off of you guys. We, this, my class isn't a class. It's a family Mm -hmm. and, and, and right. Like they don't get that and they're starting to get it, but it really is a family. And when they're not into it, I'm not into it. You know, so if they're high energy, I'm high energy. And same thing, I've got to be high energy to start bringing them alive. And I think that when they sit there and they feel like a teacher's not part of it and just talking at them, yeah. I can see how they start zoning out. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I'll tell you, and like, I, like right now it's still early in the year. It doesn't seem like it's a quarter, quarter of the way through, but I still have students who are kind of zoning out, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm still trying to bring them in and all that. And I, I think that the quicker they start to become part of this family, and it, it, you know, look at this. This is wild. So these kids have, are in eighth grade. Most of them went to school sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, right? Some of them elementary school. Being in the air, I say, who, who's somebody in this class where you don't know their name? Every hand goes up. Like, you guys have been, been going to school for three years. You guys don't know each other's names. At this point, I'll tell you, they all know each other's names. Yeah. Because we're talking so much. And, hey, well, I disagree with Mike, I disagree with Clarissa, right? Or hey, like what Mike said over there, you know? And I think once they're being part of it and they're part of the class rather than in the class, I think that's an important aspect of it. You know, there's there's an element of what you're doing here that can be taught to other teachers and packaged up and sold as an online course. I mean, it's a, you probably have a second or third uh, income stream for you, potentially. Uh, There's actually a guy, one of the guys I, uh, I had on my show uh, probably about a year ago. His name is Bradley and he does a, podcast called dropping bombs shout out to you brad and he gives me a lot of podcast people that want the intros and stuff like that so i produce them and he um he runs a company called uh light speed virtual training and he's got people from tony robbins damon john grant cardone all these big names on his platform Mm -hmm. and he's like look i have these guys on they're paying me for them but what i'm building is a university Oh yeah, because nice. eventually people are going to start sending their kids to me, to mm-hmm. Lightspeed University, to take yeah. the pick of the litter of who you want to learn from. You want to learn from Tony Robbins today? Here's his courses, mm-hmm. and that's what's going to be. And I'm going. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah, right. That's really good. That's something you should probably look into. Man. I'm uh, I'll tell you one thing. One thing I like, <laughs> and again, I, I always say, like, I, I am a, I am a bad educator. <clears throat> like, and and I think you're I, humble. I think no, I, my administrator will tell you I am a bad educator, a teacher. I'm a pretty decent teacher, yeah. but like the whole uh, like paperwork and all that stuff, it's, that's a struggle for me. Cause again, yeah. I'm going back to my old school where I, it's like, well, I don't see the point of doing that. So why yeah. am I doing it? You know? But so I, this happened about three years ago. Mm-hmm. And when you walk into my classroom above it, it says be a seal. Right. And the kids aren't sure what that means and all that. So about three years ago, me and the students were talking 
And I got a, uh, the, the Navy SEALs have this, have basically, I think it's like seven or eight words of saying, hey, this is how you become a leader. Mm-hmm. So every quarter, I have it up here on, on the board and it's, it's posted outside my room as well. Um, persistence, you know, dedication, responsibility, and all these things. And the Navy SEALs are the, they're the strongest of the strong. Mm-hmm. They get things done because they do things so rigor, so rigorously that, that other people can't do them. So we took that in the classroom. And again, these kids are now seniors up at, up at the high school. And we took be a seal where it's, we took those words and be a student engaged and actively learning. Mm-hmm. And it's the whole idea of embracing failure. Yeah. You know, life's going to be tough. You know, at some point you've got to pick yourself up. I, I have these emails and, and you were in the meeting. I said, parents, please don't email me. You know, not because I don't like talking to you, not because I don't want the best for your kids, but I would need your son or daughter to advocate for themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, I want them to be part of the class where they're actively learning. And that's a big thing I'm trying to express to the kids. Again, it sounds corny with the be a SEAL, student engaged and actively learning. Mm-hmm. But that's the big thing of actively being part of anything you're that's doing. That's how you're going to learn. It embeds yeah. itself into your DNA. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah. you play sports and you're in the back row, you're not going to be seen, right? Yeah. You're sitting in a college class, you're sitting in a trade school and you're not volunteering to go try something, you're not going to be seen. And, and that's the big thing I'm trying to get them, them to get is just actively learning and all that. The, yeah, the, the, the book will go on sale once I finish in 15 years, guys. So you can, make it <laughs> you know, write, write a page a week. You'll yeah. have it done in no time. That's, that's, that's the plan. In the summer, you think I have all this time. I just had, <laughs> I just had a, I just had a little girl, so I probably should have gotten it done last summer. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, that's a whole new learning experience. Right? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. But, when you have kids, uh, I mean, even when you have kids that, well, well, having these kids will train you for your kid later. I find that uh, having kids in one of the businesses I own enables me to speak to, and this may sound bad speak to my employees and business partners and other clients in my businesses a certain way. Yeah. You know, the selling aspect of it certainly helps, but also kind of being assertive Mm -hmm. uh, helps, helps you really get your point across when you need to, and you understand the nature and the dynamic of the relationship. Yeah. So, but it's, yeah. Um, but again, uh, man, I, I can't thank you enough for allowing me into your space today and uh, thank you very have much. me on the JMVO Weekly Primer. Guys, if you want anything from me or, or you need have anything that you want to ask me, I'm always available via, uh, uh, of course, Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Uh, you can hit me up at my website, jimmccarthyvoiceovers.com. Always listen to the podcast, share it with your friends, and please uh, let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your feedback. Jim McCarthy, voiceovers.com forward slash podcast. And again, Mr. Svilik. Thank you. Thank you for being on, man. I will also do a shout out. You're giving shout outs. Can I give a shout out? You can give a shout out. I will give a shout out to my wonderful wife, who's actually with my brand new daughter, Ava. So Rachel and Ava, Um, hopefully this will give me some brownie points for later on. There you go. There you go. (laughs) Thanks for being on, man. Thank you very much. This is the JMVO Weekly Primer. Please subscribe, rate, and comment via JimMcCarthyVoiceOvers.com forward slash podcast.